I really like my SV650. Uh, it's a first generation, a 2001. But the one thing that I really can't stand about this bike is its crappy suspension. So, I've been looking at putting on a Jixxer front end. And I've completely sourced this one that you see here from various different parts to get this thing to work. So what this video is all about, it's about switching out the, the SV650 triple trees and the entire front end that you see right here with the Jixer part that I've put together. Now because this is a first gen SV650, which includes the 1999 all the way up to the 2002 model, it has a different frame on it and it's got a different front end, which includes a steering stem and steering stops, which are all different from the second generation. So what I had to do is I had to choose out a set of S-Rad triple trees that you see right here. And the S-Rad triple trees are unique in a couple ways. One, because not only the steering stops work on the SV, but they're also wider. So what that also requires is it requires a S-Rad axle and it requires an S-Rad wheel. The forks that are on here, pretty much any 50 millimeter fork will work just fine for you. So that's what's uh, been put on, on the top there. I think the top is 50 millimeter, the bottom is 54s. And um, this all bolted together nice and cleanly. These uh, forks are from a Jixxer 1000. It was immediately available to me. It didn't cost me much. The uh, brakes, the entire front brake system is off a 2008 GSXR 600, which bolted right on there along with the 320 millimeter rotors, which are off of a Hayabusa. The front fender, I don't know what that's from. Maybe it's from the S-Rad. I don't really know. It was just in a parts bin, and it fit, so I got it, and it's on there. The clip-ons are a little bit taller than your standard clip-ons. They have a little bit of a rise in them. And the reason I got those over the standard Jixxer clip-ons that are lower is because this will give me a better and more comfortable seating position. Now the second thing you need to know is that the top bearing on the first generation SV650 is of a different size. I believe the uh, steering stem is, I want to say 28 millimeters, but it doesn't matter. It's smaller than 30 millimeters, and 30 millimeters is the standard. So I had to get a special bearing. A company named TWF happened to manufacture these. And I'll post a link on this video so you can see their website so you too can get one of these bearings. But what they do is they reduce the outside diameter of it so that way the 30 millimeter steering stem from the Jixxer will fit through this and then the outside will press down into the uh, SV650. Now I understand the bottom bearing is identical. So that won't matter a whole lot on that one. So we're probably going to use the one that's already in there because the bearing that I have in there is of decent shape and I just put it in not too long ago. Now the ignition lock and the key, all this ignition uh, part in here, this is also compatible with the S-Rad triple trees. So we're going to put the ignition up into this and bolt this all together. Now, getting started, the first thing we want to do, and the first thing that is really important to me, is you want to take the tank off. Anytime you're going to start swinging around ratchets over here, or you're going to drop something, you're going to ding up your tank. So pull off the seat. And there's two bolts, one underneath here, one underneath there, and the seat will lift forwards and up. Next thing you want to do is you want to remove the two bolts that are up here, so that way the tank can lift up. So you lift this on up, tank is up, and then while it is up, you can insert a little piece of wood or some type of shaft, to hold the tank up, remove whatever headlight you've got or any instrument cluster that's hanging on the front of the bike. In the case of mine, it's an aftermarket headlight. It's really easy to remove. It's a bolt here and a bolt on the other side in exactly the same spot. And once you get that pulled off, the next thing we'll do is remove the instrument cluster. Now, the bolts for my clip-ons have already been removed, and the reason those were removed again is because the instrument cluster bolts that you have on here was all held together as one big piece, so that, that worked out real nicely for me and my custom arrangement. But what we're going to do next is we're going to loosen all the bolts to the controls. We're going to remove the bar end, so we're going to get those off of there. The front brake is going to stay on. We're not using that. It stays. In this case, it's going to stay on. We're also going to need to loosen up the top triple. And over here, there's a bolt and there's a bolt over here on this side. You get those two loose and you loosen the center bolt in here for the steering stem. So we're going to get that out of there also. 
Now you ask me, why am I not taking everything off and I'm just loosening things up? And I'll get to that in a minute, so we'll cover that. So we've got that out, and the next thing we need to do is we need to get to those torx bolts that are underneath here, which are in here. There's one there, there's one there. We'll get those out and we'll remove the ignition. Now I would just disconnect the ignition and drop it out, but unfortunately the wires are all bundled up in the frame and I'm not going to gut all that, so we're going to do this on the easy. So we're just going to yank that sucker right out of there. Now the ignition is held in by what's known as a torx bolt. It's a six-point star-shaped tool with a hole in the middle. And this is what's going to remove the ignition. And it's the only, only size that I use. It happens to be a T40, which it says right there. All right, now the triple tree is off. We have to remove this nut and then remove the seal. In my case, I've already untorqued them. I've already got to remove the nut exposes the top bearing. Now we're going to have to drop the top triple out and this entire front end is going to come off. But what we got to get back to is we got to get back to why I loosen the bolts on everything instead of actually removing stuff. And this is real simple because now that this is loose, this is going to come right off the top. And now that it's off, the throttle will actually just slide right off the bar end. Here it is. It's off. Now this here will be waiting for when we reinstall the other front end. And likewise, it goes the same on the other side. But the deal is on the other side, you got to get this rip off first. Okay, you got to get the bike firmly secured. I jacked the front end up with the rear end of the stand, of course, so that way the bike is nice and secure. I've got the thing dangling from the front here. And the only reason why the bike is jacked up like that is so the front end doesn't fall out. Because as soon as I pull that jack out, this entire front end is just going to fall out. Piece of junk front end is now removed. All right, we've got this hideous mess here. It looks like the front of an SV650 threw up. So what we've got to do next is we've got to remove this top bearing. This top bearing needs to come on out so that way we can put that custom one in that we discussed earlier. And this custom bearing has to be pressed down in that same hole. So that old one has to come out so that way that one can be dropped in its place. So that's next. Now, there's a slot on either side of this hole. And from underneath, you can use a... Um, an awl or some type of punch. Uh, that way you can knock the outer race out. So that way once it hits out, again, we can put that new bearing in. Okay, we got the old race tapped out. So I went ahead and got in there and I cleaned out any grease or debris that might have appeared in this little hole here where the bearing is going to be seated. Now inside the frame head here, because the new bearing is a lot thinner than the old one was, these two little uh, release notches that are on the left and right sides of the frame here have to be ground out a little bit wider so that way the next time that you go to remove this new narrow bearing you'll be able to tap it out. So you can hit this with a Dremel or a file. Just go ahead and notch out each side. Simply put a little bit of grease on your finger and run it around. So we got the new bearing here and you want to make sure that the tapered side faces up because the bearing is going to fit into it this way. Now you want to tap on this lightly with a hammer that's not going to destroy it. A nice brass hammer would be good. And then once it gets in to where it needs to be, and you can't tap on it anymore, what I like to do is use the old race. And I hammer on the old race instead, and that will drive it into place. All right, the new bearing has been driven into place. So now you just want to clean that out of any debris that might have appeared inside of there. And then what I like to do is I like to just run a little grease around the inside of it. We got the bottom bearing in the recycle off the SV650 lower tree. I got that knocked out of there and the race put back onto that. I got everything greased up. I also went ahead and greased up and cleaned out the inside uh, lower race that's inside the frame. Now that bearing was in good shape because I replaced that less than a year ago, so we're going to reuse that one. This whole front end is ready to get pushed up into place. So back to this. I've got a triple tree fork lift right here for the front of the bike. So I'm going to put it up on this stand and we're going to jack that sucker right up into place. And then we're going to slowly lower the bike down onto it at which point we'll put the top bearing in there and we'll get the thing uh, snugged up the way it should be. Okay, we've got the forks up on the stand raised into position. we got the uh, rest of the bike so that we're ready to start lowering it down. So in this case I'm going to have to remove the, uh, the safety strap. So we're ready to start lowering this sucker back down a little bit more until it's not quite tight. We don't want it in there all the way. We just want it to be in there enough so that way it's still a little sloppy so we can get the front bearing in up on top. Alright, we're in place. We can start putting that bearing in now. We've got a little bit of slop in there. So that way we can get the rest of the bearing in where it needs to be. I got the new bearing up here all greased up and it's all ready to go. 
we're going to stick that right over the steering stem. We're going to push this into place. And this is a little hard with one hand, but because we have a little bit of slop, there it is. It's now in place. There's the Gixxer seal that's going to go up in the top there. I had an extra one from another project because I wound up not using a new set of seals because the old seals were just fine. And that's going to go on there just like so. And now we start putting some nuts on. There's two nuts that go on there. And there's a washer that goes in between them, just like this here. We're going to thread those right into place. We're going to put the bottom one down first. We're going to tighten the bottom nut on first, just like so. And we're going to get this hook out of the way because this hook is a freaking hooker. But I'm going to tell you to torque it down to the appropriate specification of the uh, Gixxer front end that you're putting in there. Now, I don't know what the actual specification is of the front end that you're choosing to use, so I'm just going to post up the one that was intended for the SRAD set of triple trees that I've put on here. And here's the new top tree that's going to be going in this place, just like so. And this ignition should, and it does, fit right into there just like that. Now the bolts are going to have to be tightened down in there and then we're going to have to check the frame to make sure that everything lines up that I can actually set the uh, the lock so that way it'll lock up properly. Right up on the frame head here there's a little notch and then that notch is where the steering lock from the ignition locks into when you lock the forks. Now I'd like to uh, retain that so this little half moon shape here needs to be cut out just a little tiny bit. The lock almost locks. It almost fits in there. But being that the triple trees have a slightly different shape than the old SV ones do, this has to be just slightly elongated. So we'll get a Dremel in there and I'll give this a little cut. I got a little ahead of myself and started to remount the controls. So we got that going on there. I plugged the gauges in just to make sure all the lights and everything are coming on as they're supposed to, and they are. So that's good. My throttle busted, however. The little throttle tube turned out it's extremely brittle. You see this plastic is just breaking right off of it. This thing's a piece of crap. So we're going to replace that with an R6 uh, throttle tube all at the same time. So I got another one. And this is from uh, a 636 from a Kawasaki. And it has a larger diameter, outside diameter here. So what this is going to do is going to give me less twist necessary to give me full throttle. It uh, happens to be the same diameter as an R6 part, which happens to be here. I've got both the R6 and the 63 part, 636 parts here side by side for those naysayers that say they're not the same. If you look at the actual outside diameter of these two things, and we're going to hold them together, you'll see that they are identical. See, they're identical outside diameter. So what that means is the twist is going to be identical on either one of these. And um, surprisingly enough, they're both the same size through here. The difference is, however, the R6 piece is a little bit shorter than the uh, 636 part that I've got. So I'm going to see which one my grip fits on better. Whichever one the grip fits on better is the one we're going to go with. And the answer is the 636 part, which is longer than the R6 one, is actually a better replacement. So we're going to be using this one. Alright, we're going to snug up the top trees first. And the reason why we're snugging this top tree up first is because this bolt here is not accessible when this clip-on is up in position because it actually gets blocked by the bar. You see, I can't get a tool in there. So we're going to snug this sucker up first. The last step we've got here before putting the headlight and assembly back on is we need to uh, make sure that the top tree is torqued down as it's supposed to be. Check your GSXR year uh, for whatever forks you've got for the appropriate torque uh, measurement that's supposed to be on this top bolt. Torque it down correctly because you don't want your forks popping off or having a problem down the way and you also don't want to lose that nut. Those suckers are expensive. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to put the tank back down where she belongs. So we're ready to drop the tank. So take your uh, wooden stick out or whatever kind of prop that you've got in there, raise it up, and gently drop it on down. you got your tank where she belongs. You need to put your two bolts back in here, one, two. You mount your seat back on where she belongs. There's two bolts, one here underneath and one on the other side underneath. So make sure you get those back in there the way they should be. And uh, we're going to finish putting the headlight on and it'll be ready to take for a ride providing it stops raining and that's how you mount a GSXR front end onto a first generation SV650 beautiful installation we're going to be happy with that I'm going to be taking a ride on it tomorrow and uh, everything's working out good so far I was able to bounce it around the garage and nothing seems loose everything seems nice and tight steering is free so uh, it's done completed ready to rock and roll